And now, I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all.
Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory to God in the highest. And peace to the King of Honor. Lord God, Heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, Holy Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty Father, you are the source of unity and love. Your Son prayed that he would live in us and we in him. Through his glory and our faith, may we come together in unity and love. We ask this through the same Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray. Most loving Father, bless those who have served in the armed forces of our nation and receive the souls of those men and women who gave their lives in the service of freedom as they gave themselves to advance the ideal of world peace and justice. May they inspire our continual efforts toward the same end. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit and art one God forever and ever. On this, the seventh Sunday of Easter, we take the first reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Stephen, filled with the Holy Spirit, looked up intently to heaven and saw the glory of God and Jesus standing at the right hand of God. And Stephen said, Behold, I see the heavens opened and the Son of Man standing at the right hand of God. But they cried out in a loud voice, covered their ears, and rushed upon him together. They threw him out of the city and began to stone him. The witnesses laid down their cloaks at the feet of a young man named Saul. As they were stoning Stephen, he called out, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. Then he fell to his knees and cried out in a loud voice, Lord, do not hold this sin against them. And when he said this, he fell asleep. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Every day, they devoted themselves to meeting together in the temple area and to breaking bread in their homes. They ate their meals with exaltation and sincerity of heart, praising God and enjoying favor with all the people. The second reading for today is taken from the book of Revelation. I, John, heard a voice saying to me, Behold, I am coming soon. I bring with me the recompense I will give to each according to his deeds. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the first and the last, the beginning and the end. Blessed are they who wash their robes so as to have the right to the tree of life and enter the city through its gates. I, Jesus, 
sent my angel to give you this testimony for the churches. I am the root and offspring of David, the bright morning star. The spirit and the bride say, come. Let the hearer say, come. Let the one who thirsts come forward, and the one who wants it receive the gift of life-giving water. The one who gives his testimony says, Yes, I am coming soon. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. He is above all things, and in him all things hold together. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Almighty and eternal God, who cleanse the lips of the prophet Isaiah with a burning coal, cleanse my heart and my lips through your gracious mercy, that I may worthily proclaim your holy gospel through Christ our Lord. Amen. May the Lord be in my heart and on my lips, that I may worthily proclaim his holy gospel. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. John. up his eyes to heaven, Jesus prayed, saying, Holy Father, I pray not only for them, but also for those who will believe in me through their word, so that they may all be one, as you, Father, art in me and I in you, that they also may be in us, that the world may believe that you sent me. And I have given them the glory you gave me, so that they may be one as we are one, I in them and you in me, that they may be brought to perfection as one, that the world may know that you sent me, and that you love them even as you loved me. Father, they are your gift to me. I wish that where I am, they also may be with me, that they may see my glory that you gave me, because you loved me before the foundation of the world. Righteous Father, the world also does not know you, but I know you, and they know that you sent me. I made known to them your name, and I will make it known, that the love with which you loved me may be in them and I in them. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise be to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Lifting up his eyes to heaven, Jesus prayed, saying, Holy Father, I pray not only for them, but also for those who believe in me through their word. These words are taken from today's Holy Gospel according to St. John. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. To you, my dear brothers and sisters in Christ Jesus, Today, the seventh Sunday of Easter, brings the season of Easter to a close. From the resurrection of our Lord and Savior Jesus on Easter Sunday, through this past Thursday, which was the ascension of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, Jesus appeared to many. 
not only to his disciples, but as St. Paul writes, as many as 500 brethren at the same time. And so, as we gather on this, the last Sunday of Easter, we reflect upon the words that our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, spoke mostly in these past weeks from the Gospel according to John. I point, pointed out that the first three Gospel accounts, Matthew, Mark, and Luke, speaks about the miracles of Jesus and tells some of the parables that Jesus shared to try to bring spiritual truths to the common man. But today, we hear Jesus praying. Throughout the entire Gospels of Jesus, this is one of the few times that we hear Jesus audibly pray unto the Father. And so what kind of prayer that he offered? With all the prayers that our Lord and Savior offered, the one thing that has in common is that Jesus gave thanks to God and that he was to give praise to God for all the blessings, for the power of the miracles, for the wisdom of the teachings. And so we now see more closely of the spirituality of the Son of Man, Jesus Christ. Jesus was to conclude his final dissertation, his final discourse at the Last Supper before they went to the Garden of Gethsemane. He gives instruction to the apostles starting in chapter 14, and now we see in the chapter of John chapter 17, where Jesus turns his eyes, not only now praying for his disciples, but most importantly, praying for what he wishes. That would be, in a way, his last will and testament prior to his death. Jesus says that I am praying for them, and I will pray for all those who will believe in me in their word. It's interesting, he does not say my word, but their word. We remember in the 13th chapter of John where Jesus washes the feet of the disciples. And he talks about that you are already clean by the word I've spoken unto you. And so Jesus looks to the apostles to share the message of the good news with others. And that there will be those who will believe in the Lord Jesus by the word that they speak unto others. The most important of this whole um, chapter, the 17th chapter of John, it is what we refer to as the high priestly prayer of Christ. And what does he mostly pray for? A oneness. So that they may all be one as you, Father, art in me and I in you. He is saying, the communion I have with my heavenly Father, I am praying that you might also have that spiritual communion with the Father. That all those who would come following his ascension, that they would be brought into a oneness. And that they would be aware of that oneness that exists between the disciples of Jesus and God our Heavenly Father. And he says that they all may be one as Father, you are in me and I in you. That they also may be one in us. One of the things that Jesus through his prayers was already, always offering God glory. He says, and I have given them the glory that you gave me. And again he speaks, so that they may be one as we are one. That they may be brought to perfection. It is only my brothers and sisters, when we truly feel the Spirit of God within our lives, that we are brought to a closer perfection of what Jesus said. Didn't he say that you may be perfect as my Father in heaven? That's a tall order. But if we strive to be in the Spirit, if we strive to hear the words of Jesus, because he says, the words I speak unto you, they're spirit and they're life. 
And so being in communion with the Spirit, that there is a oneness, that it makes us closer to perfection. He says, Father, they are your gift to me. What did Jesus say to his apostles as he called them and later reflected upon this? He said, you have not chosen me, but I have chosen you. And my brothers and sisters, the fact remains is as you were baptized in the name of the Holy Trinity, you were brought into a oneness. You were brought into a perfection and you were brought into a closer awareness of you being his disciples. You know, my brothers and sisters, for the past seven weeks of Easter, may we reflect upon the words that our Lord says and offers to each of us, that we might know the Father through our prayers and through our devotions, and that we might be able to share this perfection with one another. With that being aside, we also celebrate this weekend, Memorial Day weekend. Many will be going out to the various cemeteries to pay respects. I hope later on to be able to travel to Westfield where my father is interned. He was a World War II veteran. He was a poor art, he was a medic that found at the end of World War II with him being in Germany. And you know, we, we think about all those veterans. They were saying that there are hundreds of thousands, it may be as many as 400,000 that are actually interned at Arlington National Cemetery. And throughout Europe, there are various cemeteries. All will be displaying the American flag at the grave sites of the veterans, those who gave their life, and as Abraham Lincoln said, the final measure. And so, may we, on this Memorial Day weekend, amid the good weather, amid the cookouts coming out of what the past couple of years have been with the COVID virus, to remember, most importantly, why we gather for Memorial Day, to pay homage and pay respect to all those who have given us, through their own lives, freedom and democracy. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I be he in one God, the Father and the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he was born of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in fulfillment of the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I acknowledge my baptism for the forgiveness of sins. I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Please be seated. Where two or three are gathered together in my name, there am I in the midst of them. Hallelujah.
brothers and sisters, that our gifts of love and sacrifice may truly be accepted by God, our Heavenly Father. Amen. Let us pray, Almighty God. Gathering about this altar, we offer you these gifts in our lives. May your presence come alive within us to do more through us than we could ever accomplish ourselves. We ask this in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. O oh, Heavenly Father, as we offer you this sacrifice on this Memorial Day weekend, may we also offer ourselves to carry on the heritage which we have been entrusted. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your poor hearts. Unto the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. Father, all powerful and ever living God, we do well always and everywhere to give you thanks through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Uh, especially at this time when he became our Paschal sacrifice. He is the true Lamb who took away the sins of the world. Through his death, he conquered death for us. And by his wondrous resurrection, he restored eternal life to us. Therefore, we he join with the voices of angels and dark angels, with all the saints and the entire church, and we lift our hymn of praise to your glory, repeating unceasingly. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. O Son in the highest, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. O Son in the highest, please be seated. Most merciful Father, we humbly pray and ask you through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, to accept and to bless these gifts, these presents, these holy and spotless sacrifices, which we offer to you in the first place for your holy Catholic Church, that you would guide it in peace, defense, and unity throughout the whole world with its bishops and priests, especially Anthony, our Prime Bishop, and Paul, our Bishop, and all who profess the true Orthodox and Catholic faith which comes to us from the Apostles. Remember your servants, O Lord. My brothers and sisters, in our prayers let us remember the sick, the suffering and the dying, the hungry, the homeless, and the unemployed, all those who suffer from the coronavirus, and pray for not only their health but the wellness of their families. May we give God our thanks for the blessings of doctors, nurses, first responders, and all health care workers. In our deepest prayers this day, let us remember all abused and neglected children in our world, all abused and neglected animals, and especially let us pray for the 19 children and the two teachers who were slain in Texas this past week. Let us pray for all those who are victims of gun violence. May we give God our thanksgiving for the blessings of those who serve in our armed forces, both here and abroad, and remember all veterans who gave of themselves for the freedoms we have. And let us remember all here present whose faith and devotion are known to you, for whom we offer or who offer up to you the sacrifice of praise for themselves and all their own, 
for the hope of salvation and deliverance, and who freely choose to serve you, the living, eternal, and true God. We join in communion with and honor above all others the memory of Mary, the glorious Virgin Mother of our Lord and God, Jesus Christ. Also, your blessed apostles, martyrs, and confessors, together with all the countless number of saintly men and women of all nations, but especially of our nation, who live, suffered, and died for the glory of your name and the coming of your kingdom. May the remembrance of these praiseworthy people encourage us to follow their heroic example, making us worthy of your grace and love through the same Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We ask you, Lord, to graciously accept our offering and that of your whole family, and so order our days in your peace that we may be saved from spiritual damnation and counted among the flock of your chosen people through Christ our Lord. Amen. O oh God, we ask you to bless and to accept and to confirm this offering and make it pleasing unto yourself so that it may be filled with the power of the Holy Spirit and become for us the body and the blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. The day before his suffering and death, in order to manifest his infinite love to his disciples and through them to all who would believe in him, to fill the hearts of his followers with the fire of this love, to draw them to himself, make them joyful and save them, he instituted these holy mysteries in which spiritually and bodily in his entire being he again lives among his people. At that solemn moment so sacred for the whole human family, our Savior took bread into his holy and venerable hands and having lifted his eyes to heaven to you, God, his heavenly Father, giving thanks to you. He blessed it, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat it, for this is my body, which is given for you. In like manner, after supper, taking this excellent chalice into his holy and venerable hands, again giving thanks to you, he blessed it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the cup of my blood, the blood of the new and everlasting covenant, which shall be shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. As often as you do this, do it in remembrance of me. Therefore, in remembrance of this Christ, your Son, our Lord, and his blessed passion, resurrection, and his glorious ascension, we, your servants and faithful people, offer to your divine majesty from your own gifts and presence a pure offering, a holy offering, an immaculate offering, the holy bread of eternal life, and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to regard these offerings with favor and joy and accept them as you receive the gifts of your just servant Abel the sacrifice of our patriarch Abraham, and that which our high priest Melchizedek offered you, a holy sacrifice of immaculate host. We humbly ask you, Almighty God, command that this offering be brought by the hands of your holy angel to your high altar into the presence of your divine majesty, that we, who receive the most sacred body and blood of your Son from this altar, may be filled with every blessing and grace through the same Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord, remember your servants, especially our dear children, who have gone before us with the sign of faith and who now sleep in peace. To their souls, O oh Lord, as well as all those veterans who are now deceased, for whom we remember this weekend, and for all who rest in Christ, grant we pray, I'll pray he place of refreshment, delight, and peace through the same Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And grant us, your sinful servants, who hope in the greatness of your mercy, some part in fellowship with your holy apostles, martyrs, and with all your saints who shed their blood for your name, their hearts were always open to justice and mercy, and with lives patterned after their divine master, merited eternal joy. Number us in their company, Lord, not weighing our merits, but pardoning our offenses through Christ our Lord. Amen. 
by whom you always create, sanctify, revive, bless, and freely give us all these good things. Through him, with him, in him. All honor and glory are yours, Almighty Father, in the unity with the Holy Spirit. <clears throat> Forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray, instructed by our Savior's teaching, and following divine example, we say with confidence, Our Father, secure from all disturbance through the same Jesus Christ, your Son and our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit. Forever and ever. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. May this commingling and consecration of the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ Help us who receive it to everlasting life. Amen. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, I leave you peace, my peace I give you. Do not look at our sins, but on the faith of your church. And grant us the peace and unity of your kingdom, for you live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of the living God, by the will of the Father and the work of the Holy Spirit, your death brought life to the world. By your holy body and blood, free us from all our sins and from every evil. Keep us faithful to your teaching and never let us be parted from you. Who lives and reigns God forever and ever. Amen. Partaking. May the partaking of your body and blood, Lord Jesus, not be cause for our judgment or condemnation. Though we are unworthy to receive this great sacrament, through your loving kindness may become our safeguard and healing remedy. Our saving master awaken in all of us, living faith, fervent love, worship, adoration, and a holy longing. Through this communion, make us your willing servants, zealous to fulfill your holy will. May it at last unite us entirely with you, our Lord and our God. Grant us who lives and reigns with God the Father, in unity with the Holy Spirit forever and ever. Amen. My dear brothers and sisters, at this time, let us offer the act of spiritual communion. Let us pray. Most loving Jesus, I adore you in the most blessed sacrament in which you are truly present. I love you above all things and I long for you in my soul. Since I cannot receive you sacramentally, I ask you to come spiritually into my heart and heal my soul. I embrace you and unite myself with you. May I never be separated from you. Inflame my heart with the fire of your love, my Lord and Savior. Amen. 
I will take the bread of heaven, and I will call upon the name of the Lord. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word, and I shall be healed. May the body of our Lord Jesus Christ preserve my soul into life everlasting. Amen. What shall we return unto the Lord for all the graces he hath rendered unto me? I will take the chalice of salvation and I will call upon the name of the Lord. With high praise will I call upon him and I shall be saved from all my enemies. May the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ preserve my soul unto life everlasting. Amen. Amen. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say a word, and I shall be healed. Receive the body of Christ. Thank you. 
Protect them in your name that you have given me, that they may be one as we are one. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Most gracious God, our Father, you enliven us through your Son and strengthen us through his body and blood. Bless us now so that, united in faith, we may manifest the wonders of your love. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Let us pray. Most gracious God, we have received the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ, who called unto himself all those who were oppressed with the burdens of life. May he on this Memorial Day weekend draw all unto himself, as well as all those who have served in the cause of freedom and justice. We ask this through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you, in the unity of the Holy Spirit and our one God, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lo, the sacrifice has been offered. Alleluia. 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 Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. John. Glory Glory to you, Lord. Lord. In the beginning was the Word, the Word was in God's presence, and the Word was God. He was present to God in the beginning. Through Him all things came into being, and apart from Him nothing came to be. Whatever came to be in Him found the life, life for the light of men. The light shines on in the darkness, darkness that did not overcome it. There was a man named John, sent by God, who came as a witness to testify to the light, so that through him all might believe, but only to testify to the light, for he himself was not the light. The real light which gives light to every man was coming into the world. He was in the world, and through him the world was made, yet the world did not know who he was. To his own he came, yet his own did not accept him. Any who did accept him be empowered to become children of God. These are they who believe in his name, who are begotten not by blood, nor by cardinal desire, nor by man's willing it, but by God. The Word became flesh and made his dwelling among us, and we have seen his glory, the glory of an only Son coming from the Father, filled with enduring love. Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. 
Amen. Amen.